Welcome to Programming and AI, AI's next big wave. I'm Dr. Chris Chapsa, and in this channel, we're going to talk about how do I integrate AI into our applications? We've all seen the explosive growth of AI over the last couple of years now. We've seen OpenAI AI explode. We've seen Microsoft Bing integrate AI into its search capabilities. Google has AI in its search capabilities. We've created images with um, AI. And so AI is all over the board. And just when you think it can't get any bigger, the next wave is about to hit us. And that's going to be when we start integrating AI into our own solutions. And so throughout this channel, we're going to have videos that show you how to do just that. You'll learn how to interact with ChatGPT, start having text recognition, text generation, text analysis within your applications. You'll learn how to use OpenAI DALI to start generating images, leverage computer vision. We'll look at Google's new Gemini product and how you write code for it. And so... The key to programmers' success in the future is going to be able to leverage AI. We can use AI today to generate our code for our programs. That's great, but it's not always right. So we still need programming skills. And the programmers who are going to be in demand are going to be the ones who can integrate AI into a solution, know how to do some machine learning, but more importantly, know how to do generative AI to start leveraging business solutions. So let's go ahead and jump in. So by now you've hopefully played with ChatGPT. If you haven't, go to the OpenAI site and start using ChatGPT. And initially you'll think it's maybe a search engine on steroid. And that's until you start using some of its text generative capabilities and start allowing it to create things for you and become a business partner or business assistant that you come to rely on. If you're a programmer, you can use it to create quick proofs of concept that you can then later expand. And so you need to be working with ChatGPT. As you work with it, you'll find that ChatGTP stores a context about your discussion. And so you can re rely on that context to give it more meaning as you're asking different questions. It's soon you'll find that as you leverage prompt engineering, meaning writing better descriptive prompts, you can get descriptive answers from ChatGPT. And so most people are using ChatGPT from the ChatGPT prompt, which is great. But to truly unlock its functionality, you need to start to integrate it into your applications. We're going to take a look at an application in this video that does just that. Um, but if you've not started with ChatGPT, you need to. And while you're at the OpenAI site, you can get an API key that you'll need to start integrating ChatGPT into your solutions. Beyond ChatGPT, most users are getting first exposures to AI using tools that create and generate images. Bing Image Creator is the perfect example. And so a lot of people are starting to put images on the web that they've created using Image Creator or um, Adobe Firefly. And these products are driving adoption for AI. And they're cute and they're clever. But to really, again, start to leverage the functionality, you want to be working with your own images, using computer vision on your own images. And to do that, you need to start integrating these capabilities into your own applications. And in this video, we'll actually show how do I use generative AI to create an image from a Python script. And so OpenAI had the AI marketplace. It was what we read about in the newspapers and saw right now in the news. And Google's going to compete with that in a big way with its new Gemini product and leveraging and interacting with AI through the Google AI Studio. And again, it's a prompt-driven um, generative AI environment. You can ask the same kind of questions that you would with ChatGPT. Um, but more importantly, it's also accessible by API, so we can leverage it within our own applications. And we'll have a series of videos that show us just how to do that with respect to text generation, image generation, and more. And so again, AI has had a huge explosion. We can't think that it can get any bigger than it is. It, it's accelerating. People are 
um, adopting it. And so all this is going on. But now we're seeing applications start to integrate it and applications at the enterprise level. So Salesforce is integrating it into its customer relationship management process. Photoshop is integrating it to help you better edit and manipulate graphics, create content within your graphics. So we're seeing the big applications already leveraging it today, making those available to users. But where AI is going to have its biggest impact is in custom applications, doing things within healthcare, examining electronic healthcare records, looking at images and doing diagnosis, finances, looking for fraud, being able to bounce the books within a company, inventory management, predictive analytics, supply chain management, customer service, AI-driven chatbots. All these applications will be custom and kind of a bespoke solution for different industries. The developers who can create those applications are going to be in huge demand. They're, they're going to be the rock stars of the next few years. And so our focus is going to become, how do I integrate AI solutions into an application? And so again, the solution is, how do I integrate AI into my programs? I get it. AI is big. It's ubiquitous. It's starting to impact all aspects of our life. I just need to be able to code it. And that's what this channel is going to take a look at. And so we're going to look at a lot of solutions that integrate AI into them that are custom applications written in Python and other programming languages that you can create. A lot of them will come from my book, OpenAI and ChatGPT Programming. The book presents 50 real world examples or Python driven. And so we can create Python solutions. That's great. It's running on my computer. I need to give it to somebody else in the organization. They now have to have Python installed. So the true integration and evolution is to have AI in the cloud. And the book actually teaches us how to do that. How do I create a web or cloud-based front end that's interacting and leveraging AI? We've got dozens of applications to actually show how to do that. So you should take time now and check out the book. Also take time to subscribe to this video channel so you continue to get the updates. We're gonna walk through a ton of code in the channel and you'll wanna be kept abreast of it because we'll be doing the latest APIs, the latest capabilities, latest functionality. So how do you get started? We're gonna start with OpenAI. It's the elephant in the room. And we know that Gemini is going to be another big elephant in the room. We'll move on to Gemini. But for the applications that we'll present today, um, go to OpenAI and register, log in, and you can get an API key. You'll need to have a key to be able to interact with the, or your programs to interact with the API. And then you'll need a programming environment. A lot of the examples that we're going to use just simply use Python. It's ubiquitous. Seven million programmers are using it. And so get those, um, get your API key and get your editor ready and we'll start creating some code. So you can kind of think of Hello World as being the first application that developers often create when they start using a new programming language. So we're going to start with OpenAI and we've got some Python code here and we're going to do a Hello World application that prompts ChatGPT via our program, interacts with it and ask it, what's the origin of Hello World in programming? And we call the API and we're going to get the response and print it. And so in 10 lines of code, we will have interacted with OpenAI, integrated AI into our own applications. And this is kind of our Hello World app. So first thing we need to just pip um, OpenAI so you've got it available on your system. Then after that, the program imports OpenAI. And we said to interact with the uh, OpenAI API, you need an API key. And to keep this simple, you're just going to hard code your API key right in that line where it says, put your API key here. In the future, I'll show you how to get your API key from the operating system environment so it's more secure, um, but this will get us started. We've got a prompt text variable, and that's the same thing that we would have typed in at the chat GPT prompt, was our origin of hello world and programming. And now we do our API call, and we're going to end up calling the client objects chat completion create method we're telling it i want to use chat gpt4 as my model and then i'm passing in a message that has my prompt the api will run 
OpenAI will do its analysis, get it off to ChatGPT. It'll determine the origin of hello world and programming. It will return its response and we'll just display that message contents. And voila, we have OpenAI integrated into our application. And so generating text within uh, your own applications using OpenAI is awesome, but it's kind of more fun to create an image. And so in this case, we're going to use OpenAI, the DALI 3 model. And so our code's going to be similar. In this case, I'm getting my API key from the operating system environment. And so I use a set command at the system prompt to set the variable OpenAI underscore API underscore key to my key. So I don't have to hard code my key into my code. If you've not yet done this, you can, you can hard code your key and things will still work. Um, but now I'm setting up my client to interact with OpenAI and now I make my call and I'm passing it the prompt. I want a cream colored Labradoodle in a library wearing a smoking jacket, smoking a cigar. I'm telling it the size of the image I want, 1024 by 1024, just give me a standard quality. I want one image returned back to me. The API will do its processing. DALI will generate the image and the response will have the URL to the image that was created. That's out on the OpenAI um, website. And so I'm just going to print that URL. And if I then take that URL, cut it in my browser, I'll have the image that's shown here. Again, 10 lines of code and your applications are doing AI generated images. And so really straightforward. And so I've said that generating Python programs that we can run our own system is cool and a great way to start, but ultimately we're going to want to make our applications accessible to more users. And the easiest way to do that is to deploy the application in the web or in the cloud. And so the book presents a dozen applications that show you how to do just that. This is one of the applications running in the web and it's coming up and asking us, um, select an image. So we're picking our own image. I picked an image with the dogs in the cabin and one smoking a cigar. And then it's asked me, what do you want to know about this image? We're using computer vision, which is a subset of AI that allows an AI application to analyze an image. And so I'm saying, well, describe the image. I'm passing that image off to OpenAI and it's doing an analysis of the image and coming back and its result is shown here and it nails it. It describes the dogs, describes the pot of gold, it describes the cabin, the lake in the background. And so the book will show you how to perform computer vision in this way. And you're gonna find out once you get started with it, it's gonna lift a lot of the magic sense that AI is just magic out of the equation. And they'll all start to make much, much more sense to you. And your imagination will just kind of run wild with the type of applications that you can then create. And so what do you need to do, kind of your next steps? You should subscribe to this channel. That way you'll be notified every time I present a new application. Register at OpenAI, get your OpenAI key, or the book, OpenAI and GP, Chat GPT Programming, so you can get started. Um, be ready to do the same thing again with Google Gemini and get ready to have some fun and code. So again, remember to subscribe to the video channel. I appreciate you being here. I'm Dr. Chris Jamesa, and our topic is AI applications.